Hi everyone, my name is Anita Ladani. I'm a licensed clinical social worker and an energy practitioner. And this is uh, the second part of a four part series on raising brilliant kids. So today I wanna to talk to you about the difference between keeping kids busy versus keeping kids engaged. Um, so, and before I do that, let's summarize what part one was about. I talked about the book, The Prophet, and I read to you from that. And basically, the prophet says that the book, the prophet says that your kids come through you, but are not of you. And the summary is that, you know, we are given these amazing souls that are entrusted in our care by God to nurture and to raise and to love and to cherish and do justice to them. Our responsibility as parents is to make sure we do the best job we possibly can in creating a nurturing environment so that these beautiful souls that are entrusted to us grow up to be amazing individuals who then are able to live their life's purpose, whatever that is. And we have to, as parents, be careful about not imposing our own unfulfilled dreams, our unfulfilled, um, you know, expectations of what we were not able to accomplish. Um, we want to make sure that, you know, we, we support and foster and nurture whatever it is that our kids want to be. Uh, not everyone's going to be a doctor and an engineer. And not that there's anything wrong with that, but the world needs all sorts of people. So, that's the first that was that was you know um part one so part two i want to talk about keeping kids engaged versus keeping kids busy now we keep our kids good parents right the ones who want to raise brilliant kids we keep our kids very busy very engaged but is it what's the difference so they go to these different classes you know we make sure we you know uh, expose them to different camps in the summertime. Um, you know, we're really constantly making sure they're, um, they're engaged, they're busy. But the difference is engaged is what helping them to grow, to nurture, to be disciplined. You know, it's not a bad thing to keep your kid's schedule busy. It just depends on the age and depends on your child's ability to process whatever it is you're throwing you're throwing at them, right? So, for example, you know, if you've got a child, you know, that, for example, you know, it, it's, you've got a child in four different activities in the course of a week, great. If your child is able to handle that and if your child doesn't have, is not burning out, great, perfect. But perhaps you might want to consider maybe picking one or two activities and just investing your time and energy in nurturing that. So in the beginning, it's fine when your kid is younger and you're trying to sort of explore and see what your child is into. But if your child was like my child, you know, they never stuck with anything permanently. And so I, I was constantly sort of, you know, doing that. And then once they discovered what they enjoyed, so my older one, you know, did football for years. Uh, and then he decided that he didn't want to do football, but he was doing weight, you know, uh, bodybuilding and track and whatnot. And then on his own, he discovered music his senior year. My youngest couldn't care less to learn an instrument, didn't want anything to do with the arts, but jiu-jitsu is his thing. He loves jiu-jitsu. So this kid trains every single five, six days a week he's training. Um, I have other families, again, who are very much into, you know, taekwondo, or they're very much into, you know, gymnastics, or they're very much into... Uh, you know, the arts and whatever it is, the families have prioritized their schedule so that the kids are engaged in that and they're perfecting and mastering and, and being the best they can at one thing. Um, but there's, so that's a great thing, you know, keep your kids engaged. You know, I'm not talking about, you know, just, um, you want idle minds is a devil's workshop, right? And I think that's keeping them engaged in different productive activities is important. Um, but I also just want to, you know, 
air, you know, caution to parents to make sure you're not burning your kids out. Um, so balance that out, you know, and, and at the end of the at the end of the day, you know, it's you want to raise healthy kids. You want to raise kids that are balanced and grounded. So keeping a kid busy, which is literally just sticking them in front of a TV or sticking them in front of an iPad um, is not productive. Right. And that brings me to screen time. Let's talk about screen time. So screen time is basically any screen that you're in front of, whether it's the TV screen, whether it's your iPad, whether it's your phone, whether it's a computer, if, if whether it's, you know, the TV in the car, a lot of, you know, a lot of families have those monitors in the car and they put Disney on the minute they get in the car. Anything that has a screen and you're exposed to is screen time. So research, recent research has shown a very sad and depressing uh, conclusions where they've shown that kids under the age of three who are exposed to screen time, um, and we're not even talking extreme amounts, like they're saying no screen time for anyone under the age of three, none. Because, you know, we parents think that if we don't expose them to screen time, then they're not somehow going to be, you know, technologically savvy by the time they get to daycare. Well, you know, what this research showed was that that's not the case. That didn't matter because kids pick up fine. On the contrary, exposing them to screen time early on in life, the first three years of life, actually increases their rate of ADHD, increases their rate of um, you know, mental illnesses, increases the rate of behavioral issues in school, increases the, the rates of kids not being able to process their own emotions, uh, kids wanting instant gratification versus being able to really learn to work towards something. Um, and it's, it's, it's really a sad thing when I see a child that, you know, before he can even walk or talk is swiping left and swiping right and clicking and doing that, and parents are actually proud of that. I'm sorry, with all due respect, that is nothing to be proud of. That means that YouTube has been babysitting your child versus you. Um, and so, you know, it catches up, parents. It's going to catch up. It does. And the research has been so detrimental that what they've, dis what they've decided, the talk is that the next diagnostic manual, the DSM, I think it's five right now, the sixth one that's coming out, which is the big fat manual, the thick manual that basically has all the official codes for all kinds of di um, uh, you know, mental illnesses. They're going to include a, a diagnosis for, for kids and adults who are addicted to screen time, uh, specifically video games and just screen time in general. Um, when they hooked up kids and teenagers um, and they studied their brain activities, what they realized was that the same parts of the brain are, is getting stimulated when a kid is, you know, uh, watching a like or watching, you know, um, a share on their, you know, whatever Instagram account or whatever. It's the same area that re the levels of dopamine that are released is the same uh, area that gets stimulated when a child does, when an adult does drugs. So basically this swiping left and swiping right and this co constantly checking your phone for, and not just that, text messages, right? When you get a text message, you instantly get a perk up. I mean, we adults do it, right? We instantly want to have this need to check our WhatsApp messages, to check our, you know, Twitter feeds, to check our, you know, Snapchats. And we're becoming, we are like addicts, except it's not an actual drug we're addicted to, but it's the drug that's naturally ex um, created in our brain as a response to the stimulation, the external stimulation. Um, so that's, again, you know, knowledge is power. So I offer this with the intention that you will at least start to now take a look at your own kids, your own lives, your own interactions, your own, even if you don't have kids, even if you're just an adult watching this, you will take a look at your own interaction with screens and you will then hopefully start to monitor that and control that. Uh, if your 
if your you know child is spending three hours a day on screens cut it down to two and a half start somewhere right uh, if your child is you know if start somewhere that's all because um, it, it's it's challenging it's difficult especially when parents are working and they're not able to monitor you know what the child is doing uh, you know there there are safeguards that you can put in place there are apps you can do to lock phones up to lock you know certain uh, games up um, be mindful also parents of the video games your kids are playing because certain games are going to um, stimulate and create um, unfortunately kids that are able to detach from the reality of violence you know so these violent video games end up creating kids um, that don't quite understand that the blood that they see on the screen is actually real it's a real person dying or getting hurt it's just a game to them and unfortunately a lot of times that gets acted out in their personal life uh, in the terms of you know the the risks that they take uh, in their own behaviors and of course teenagers are prone to risky behaviors anyways but it doesn't help when they have a um, disillusionment about life or they have a misunderstanding of what reality is versus you know what something on a screen is so uh, i hope this has been helpful and uh, as always love and light take care god bless